guys today I want to show you how to measure out the damage on a car by using a laser and what I'm using is just a cheap self-leveling laser that's the key it has to be able to level itself out and the thing about cars is you cannot really get away well some people do it I guess a lot of people do it by using these cheap regular bubble levelers um, but these things are crap they're okay if you're building a house where you don't have to be really precise. However, when it comes to cars, precision is a key and you wanna make sure that your tolerances are really, really close and that's something you cannot achieve with one of these. So the very first step, and it's very important, you have to make sure that the car is level side to side. So the way I have this level set up, it comes up to the height of these corners right here. So if you look, you can see the laser is hitting this very corner and we have to have the same exact thing happening on the other side of the car so it's a little hard to see but same thing it's hitting this corner because both of these points on either side of the car are going to be in the same exact position so if we're leveling out in same points on both sides of the car we know that the car is 100 percent level step number two the two corners that the laser was hitting measure out the distance between them now split that distance exactly down the middle put down a piece of masking tape and mark that half point on the masking tape that will represent a direct center of the vehicle step three same thing as with the front i look at the corners right here and then corresponding corner on this side right here same thing i measure out the distance and then i marked the center with a black marker right here here's a tip if you remove the plastic cover that covers up the windshield wiper assembly more often than not there's going to be something right in this area whether it's a notch like on this car or there could be just a hole like uh, right here now I'm not sure what this hole is all about but this notch right here represents once again direct center and then I even got it marked just for my own reference right there right in the center got it marked with a marker and that mark should match up exactly to our mark on a masking tape so now the laser has to be positioned in such a way where the laser beam will pass through the area in front of a car and also a corresponding mark that's where I have it marked and the beam is passing right through it so I know this laser beam is splitting the car down the middle exactly guys this is the next day it is daylight out and it's raining that's why I have this tent up above me and I also have this blanket behind me to shield some of the light so you can see the laser beam better and I am using a green laser right now reason being is green laser is more intense so it is easier to see during the day and the only reason I got this going on is for you so you can see better as to what it is that I'm trying to explain so every laser level will have two lines vertical and horizontal now we're gonna be using vertical line to split the car in the center and then we're gonna measure out from that line and that's how we'll figure out whether anything had moved side to side and then the horizontal line will be used to figure out if anything moved up or down when I'm picking a spot to measure I got to make sure that for example if we're taking this hole right here I got to make sure that there's a corresponding hole on the other side like the one down here because we're gonna be measuring both of these holes against each other because they should be in the same exact position as far as up and down or side to side. So let's start with up and down. All right, it's a little windy, so beam is shaking a little bit. Okay, hope you guys can see it. The beam lands right at that nine but it's actually 89 millimeters all right let's go to the other side B 
beam is landing here right between 89 and 90 so we are maybe off by about half a millimeter which is just fine because even when the cars are made brand new at the factory they're not going to be exactly symmetrical 100 percent because there's always going to be one or two millimeter worth of errors now let's go ahead and step further back here all right and we are we are at 68 millimeters Let's go to the other side. Here we are at 62 to 63 millimeters. So let's just call it 63. So since the measurement on this side is smaller than on the other side by five millimeters, that means that this side is higher up by five millimeters, which is about quarter of an inch. Now, what can cause that? The first measurement that I took of this hole, if you see, there's this beam that runs down and it connects directly to a frame rail on both sides. That means that our frame rails are actually within spec. They are at the right height. So let's go ahead and start measuring further back to figure out what's going on. So if I go back here to the strut tower, and I can actually just use top of the bolt for, to take my measurements off of, so beam lands right on 21 millimeters. Let's check the other side. And here beam lands on about 25 to 26 millimeter mark. So that means we're off by five millimeters. So the conclusion that I can make here is there was some suspension damage done to a front driver's side and that must have caused the strut tower to get pushed up by five millimeters. So now I know that my problem lies right in here because this is going to be my structural point and if i pull this whole strut tower down by five millimeters that should bring down all of this area that's connected to this part of the radiator support so all of this will come down by five millimeters and then my measurements will be the same between the points here and there and also there and there now let me show you how to measure side to side movement if there is any movement using vertical line first thing you want to make sure is once again you want to make sure that you are directly at the center of a car so never mind all this stuff that i have sitting over here i'm just trying to create a little more shade so you guys can see the laser beam a little better since we know that this strut tower sits a little bit higher up than this one because it got pushed up um, I don't know whether that strut tower moved in or out due to the damage. So let's just go ahead and measure it out. So I'm picking once again two measuring points. There's a big hole right here and there is corresponding hole on this side. So those are the ones I'll be using. I got the magnet holding down this end of the measuring tape. Let's go ahead and take the measurement. Okay, so 56 millimeters. Now let's go ahead and uh, reverse the measuring tape. And measuring from this side, our measurement lands on, oh, hard to see, but yep, it lands exactly on 56 millimeter mark. So now I know that that strut tower did not move in this way or out that way. It sits exactly where it's supposed to be because the measurement is same exact whether you measure out from that way this way or from here on out that way. If the measurement comes back the same, then you know that there has not been any movement. So the same technique with a vertical laser beam can be used to figure out if the frame rails had moved to either right or left. Since this vehicle was primarily damaged on that side, there's a good chance that that frame rail got pushed over this way. But since both of these frame rails are connected with this cross member down here and this one up top, that means that if that frame rail moved, that one would move that way at the same time. So once again, we're gonna take the measurements between these two corresponding bolt holes on the frame rails. This one here and this one here. So I'm just using this magnet to hold down that end of the measuring tape. 
And so our total measurement between the holes, center to center, is 80, 9, and then that 9 reading falls right into the center of the hole. So that, that means we are at 89 centimeters, which transfers into 890 millimeters. Now, if we were to split this measurement directly down the middle, we would end up with 445 millimeters. That's where the laser beam should land. However, it is landing right on, right there, right on that fiber. So 450 millimeters. That means we are off by five millimeters. That means that both of our frame rails have moved this way by five millimeters, which equals about a quarter of an inch. Guys, I hope this tutorial wasn't too confusing. I hope you learned something. Now, what methods do you use to measure out the damage? Do you use the laser or some other means? Let me know down in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I got more content coming your way. See you soon.